April 15 makes it 110 years since the Titanic sank after she had hit an iceberg at 11.40 p.m. on April 14, 1912. At the time, the ship was approximately 375 miles south of Newfoundland in the Northern Atlantic Ocean. Experts who have studied the disaster, including the ship's remains that were discovered on the ocean floor in 1985, have concluded that no single factor is to blame. Thus, let's take a look at these top five factors that led to the sinking of the Titanic. In January of 1912, coal miners in Britain decided to go on strike for minimum wages, causing complications in the shipping industry. Good news came when the gold strike ended on April 6, 1912, but the bad news was that there wasn't going to be enough time to get newly mined coal to the docks before Titanic's maiden voyage. In order to lift the speed limitations placed on Titanic, the management bought coal from ships docked, putting them out of service. Hence, many of their passengers booked the Titanic. However, before setting sail, the hull of the infamous ship was compromised as a fire spontaneously lit inside one of its enormous coal bunkers and critically weakened a crucial segment of the ship's hull. The Titanic, like most ships of its day, just had one hull instead of the two modern ships have. Because the bunkers where the crew stored coal for the engines sat right next to the hull, the heat from the fire transferred directly to the skin, damaging the Titanic's structure. The owners of the Titanic knew this, but they ignored it for fear of bad press and the desire to keep the ship on schedule. So, cancelling the trip was out of the question. It is therefore a coincidence that the floating mountain of ice may have happened to strike the exact spot where the hull had been weakened by a coal fire blazing in the bowels of the passenger ship. In 1985, when an American-French expedition finally located the historic wreck, Investigators discovered that contrary to earlier findings, the Titanic had not sunk intact after hitting the iceberg, but had broken apart on the ocean's surface. They discovered that the shipbuilder's ambitious plans to build three large ships at the same time had put a huge strain on its shipyard. Not because of cost, but because of time pressures, they started using lower quality material to fill the gaps. More than 3 million rivets held the Titanic together and while examining 48 rivets brought off from the wreck, they found out the rivets contained high concentrations of slag, a residue of smelting that can make metal fracture prone. This substandard iron was pounded by hand into the ship's bow and stern, where the large machines required to pound in steel rivets didn't fit. Steel rivets, meanwhile, which are more stronger than iron, were put in the more accessible middle of the ship. When the Titanic hit the iceberg, the weaker iron rivets in the bow popped, opening seams in the hull and hurrying the ship's demise. It is no accident, therefore, that the flooding stopped at the point in the hull where the steel rivets began. According to a research in 2012, it was discovered that the captain of the Titanic, Edward John Smith, failed his original navigation examination. The examination was designed to test sailors' experience, general good conduct and self-control. However, the captain finally received his master's certificate in February 1888 at the age of 38. This could have been a factor for Titanic's disaster as the ship was sailing too fast at 40.24 km per hour for the icy conditions. 
and Smith, with over 30 years' experience at sea, paid too little attention to iceberg warnings he had received. He even cancelled the lifeboat drills scheduled on the morning the day the Titanic sank. The captain went down with the ship and his body was never recovered. The crew members watching for icebergs from the crow's nest didn't have binoculars to have spotted it. Second officer David Blair, who held the key to the Titanic's store of binoculars in his pocket, was transferred off the ship before it left for its maiden voyage from Southampton and forgot to hand over the key to the officer who replaced him. At a later inquiry into the sinking, a lookout on the Titanic said binoculars might have helped them spot and dodge the iceberg in time. Blair kept the key as a souvenir of his near miss. It was auctioned off in 2007 and fetched some £90,000. No matter what caused the Titanic to sink, such a massive loss of life could probably have been avoided if the ship had carried sufficient lifeboats for its passengers and crew. But the liner left Southampton with only 20 lifeboats with a total capacity of 1,178 people. A civil servant who inspected the Titanic in Southampton recommended it carry 50% more lifeboats. His handwritten notes at the time later revealed that he felt his job would be threatened if he did not give the famous ship the go-ahead to sail. Due to the chaos that ensued after the Titanic struck an iceberg, the 20 lifeboats departed the ship with some 400 empty seats, leaving more than 1,500 people to perish in the frigid ocean waters. Approximately 705 people survived by boarding lifeboats. Unfortunately, outdated maritime regulations had not forced the ship's designers to include enough lifeboats to ensure the survival of all passengers and crew members. As a matter of fact, the Titanic had only enough lifeboats to save a little more than half of its passengers and crew, if properly loaded. The lifeboats weren't properly loaded and approximately 1,517 people perished in the disaster, making it one of the worst peacetime maritime disasters in history. In summary, high speeds, a fatal wrong turn, cost caught, weather conditions, a dismissed key iceberg warning, and lack of binoculars and lifeboats all contributed to the worst maritime tragedies in peacetime. Could the Titanic have been stronger? Certainly. Higher quality rivets or a thicker hull might have kept the ship afloat longer. But ultimately, the Titanic was designed to be a passenger liner, not a battleship. The ship was built to the best of their knowledge at the time and to the proper standards. Nothing could have survived what happened to it. Extensive forensic analysis of the wreckage has in a way brought the story of the Titanic to a familiar place. The ship was not just designed to run into icebergs, and when it did, nothing could stop its journey to the bottom of the Atlantic. Criminal negligence, tragic and unfortunate chain of coincidences, fire or ice, whatever it was, it took the lives of hundreds of people and still keeps the minds of researchers busy to this day.